How's it guys? This is part four in my Into the Wild series on Gonorrhageau National Park. This episode is dedicated to getting around in the park. Now the first thing you should know about getting around in the park is that you will almost certainly require a 4x4 and at least a high clearance vehicle. Please do be careful on some of the back roads. They're very, very little visited and if you do break down, you could be there for quite a long time. So make sure you're well prepared, ideally travel with another vehicle. In this episode, I'm going to talk you through uh, the main causeways that go across the Runde River. I'll talk you through some of the back roads and especially the kind of more adventurous 4x4 trails in the park. And finally, I'll just quickly review the main picnic sites and viewpoints in the park. So when you get to Chipinda Pools and now you want to go to the south of the park, you've got a great big river, the Runde River in the way, and you've got to get across it. The first sign you'll see before you even get into the park says Runde Bridge. Don't take it. Underneath you might also spot the words Broken Bridge, and it's there for a reason. That bridge came down in the Cyclone Eileen in 2000, never replaced. Uh, you can drive a little bit along it and then you'll come screeching to a terrifying halt. So the very first of the causeways coming from Chipinda Pools is the one at Chipinda Pools itself. It's a long, mostly rocky causeway, a little bit of water, not really any sand at all. Pretty straightforward on this one. Coming from Chipinda Pools, about 15 minutes towards the Chilojo Cliffs, there's a right-hand turn. If you head down that, you will come to this, Nkwangolo Tilo the rainbow. This is the only all-weather access across the river in the park and is probably the single largest investment that's been made in Gonorrhageau within the last 10 years. Absolutely brand spanking new, opened in December 2019. Fishens Causeway, very close to Fishens, Directors, Slaro, Chinguli Camps, Pretty simple crossing, you got a bit of water and then a long stretch of sand, slightly steep climb out on the director's campsite, but very easy going. Coming from Chipinda Pools, once you've hit the Chilojo Cliffs, well don't actually hit them, but we've reached the Chilojo campsites and then you're heading in an easterly direction towards the Save Rundi Junction, there are three causeways. The first of those is Bopamela, just in front of the cliffs, very close to Bopamela Camp. As you travel along from Chilojo towards the Save Runde Junction, the second causeway is Chitove, guarded over by two enormous baobab trees. You cross the river and there's Chitove Camp right there. The last of the causeways coming from Chipinda Pools to the confluence across the Runde River is Chamalavati, very close to Chamalavati Camp, Machiniwa Pan. Uh, it's probably the longest and most technically challenging of all of the crossings. Quite a bit of sand on both sides. The, the river itself is quite a short crossing, although it does get a little bit deep. If you are in a narrow ve uh, wheeled vehicle or perhaps towing a trailer, you might want to look at one of the other causeways. But if you're in an 80 series cruiser with big fat tackies like mine, this is the most enjoyable of all of the causeways. Okay guys, that summarizes, I think the main river crossings and the causeways. Now let's talk about the roads and getting around in the park. As I mentioned before, uh, the main roads in the park are essentially accessible by two-wheel drive, although it would help you to have a high clearance vehicle. But if you do have a 4x4, of course what you should be doing is getting away from those main roads and exploring some of the other back roads in the park. There are lots of them, I'm not going to talk you through all of them, you should do your own exploration. But here I'm just going to give you a few little tasters from a couple of the roads that I really, really enjoyed driving. And let me tell you, when you're on these roads, you're pretty much guaranteed you're not going to encounter any other travelers at all. 
Visitors to the confluence uh, of the Runde and the Savi River from Chipinda Pools tend to take the road that goes via the Chilojo Cliffs. But if you want a slightly different uh, option and a much quieter and less traveled option, take the Pombadzi Road. So the first left hand turn when you come out of Chipinda Pools signposted to Masasanya Dam and then before you get the dam you hike off another left hand turn and then you just carry straight on. It's about a three hour drive, very wild, it's actually called the Pombadzi Wilderness Area, you won't see anyone at all on your journey, that's pretty much guaranteed. Quite a bit of wildlife, very different terrain and landscape from the rest of the park, much more elevated. There are a few routes down through the center of the park. If you want a more interesting and less traveled one, head your way to director's camp and then follow the Nyavasikana River Drive that goes up along the Nyavasikana River, very close to the Mozambican border, and then go around to Gulueni Camp. All right, and then I'm just gonna give you a quick whiz through some of the picnic sites and some of the viewpoints in this park. I don't wanna to give too much away and diminish the thrill of discovery for you, but I just want to show you a little taste of what's on offer in this fabulous park. Of all the picnic sites in Gonorrhageau, perhaps the best known and therefore the most visited is this one at Chilojo. It's a very breathtaking view down onto the river. And if counting crocodiles from a very safe distance is your thing, you will count a lot of them here. Perhaps few places in Gonorrhageau are as evocative of mana pools as Tembuahata. This is Samalema Gorge picnic site, the Nyavasikana picnic site, Masasanya Dam. The perfect place to spend the day sitting, relaxing, and watching the phenomenal bird life on this beautiful pan. For an utterly breathtaking spectacle, Head out of Chipinda Pools towards Chilojo, take the first right mark to Chivalila campsite, go down there a little bit, turn right, and you'll find yourself at this spot. This is the brand new Chivalila Falls viewpoint. My goodness, what a view. If you only take one photograph during your trip to Gonorrhageau, this would be my suggestion. This is Chilojo viewpoint, the westernmost of the two viewpoints from the top of the Chilojo cliffs, the iconic freestanding pinnacle of rock in the background, below me the Runde River, and across on the other side the Chilojo camps and the Chilojo picnic site. One of the most spectacular views of the entire Gonorrhageau National Park. This is the view over the Nkwangalotilo Causeway, made even more beautiful at this time of year by the autumnal colors of this, the red bushwillow Combritum apiculatum. Few people that do make this extra effort to get to this place are rewarded handsomely with an extraordinary open view, a completely different vista from the cliffs with miles and miles of Africa laid out in front of them and not a soul in sight. And that's the end of part four of my Into the Wild Zimbabwe series on Gonorrhageau. This has been the episode about getting around in the park. I'm now driving on the beautiful Pombadzi Wilderness Track around the northeast of the park. So if you did enjoy that, there are another six episodes in this series on Gonorrhageau. Please do check them out on the Into the Wild Zimbabwe Facebook page. You can also see more on my African Plant Hunter Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channels. And if you really like what I do, if it helps you in any way and you would like to support it, please go to patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter and for little more than the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can sling some bucks my way which will help me to make lots more videos like this. It's been loads of fun talking to you guys and showing you around this wonderful park. Please do go and check out the other episodes. I got some driving to do. I will catch you later. Bye.